Welcome to another video. So, there's a new agent in town, and I wanted to talk about it. This one is called Goose, or codename Goose, however you want to say it. It is an AI agent that claims to automate engineering tasks seamlessly. It's open source, and you can run it locally. It is also extensible, because it allows you to integrate any MCP server into it, and it will enhance itself based on what you plug in. There are a bunch of extensions, like this developer one, or the computer controller one, or several others, which will allow you to get it customized as needed. I believe you can plug in any other extension as well, if needed. Now, it is aimed at being an AI agent mainly focused on engineering tasks, or basically coding. Although it can almost do anything, it is focused on that. Anyway, you can run it with all kinds of models, including Anthropic, Gemini, Grok, Olama, OpenAI, and OpenRouter, which is pretty great. Although it requires the models to have function calling support, so there's that. Using it with Gemini means that you can probably use it for free with 2.0 Flash, and it should be pretty great for the whole agent thing, as it's trained considerably for those tasks. If you wish to use it locally, then I'll recommend the new Mistral Small 3 model because it supports function calling and is pretty great, although you can also use the DeepSeq R1 Distill model if you wish to. There's also a more optimized version of it for Goose that supports slightly better function calling and is a bit more optimized in every respect. There are two ways to use it. You can either use their desktop application, which is unfortunately available only for Mac OS, or you can also use their CLI tool, which is available on both Mac OS and Windows. So, let me tell you how you can use it, and we'll also test how well it performs both as an AI agent and as a coder. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered art generator that allows you to type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. Photogenius AI gives you all kinds of image generation models in one place, whether it be Flux, Stable Diffusion, Kardinsky, or any image generator model that you can think of. Not just that, it also gives you the option to do advanced AI image editing as well, with their cool AI tools like an AI avatar generator, background removal, logo generator, emoji generator, or even add an app icon generator. And the best part is that it starts at only $10, and you can get an additional 25% off these already great deals by using my coupon code KING25. So, Make sure that you check out photogenius.ai through the link in the description and generate some cool stuff with it. Anyway, now we can start by getting it installed. First, you can just come to this page, and here you'll see this command, which you'll need to run locally. Once you do that, it will install the required components locally. Once you run it, it will ask you for the following information. It will first ask you for the model provider. You can select any, like Gemini, Anthropic, or even Olama. Just select whichever you want. I have selected Gemini. Now, you'll be asked to enter the API key, which will be set as an environment variable. And once you have done that, it will be set up, and now you can use it. If you wish to change something, then you'll need to run the goose configure command to change the provider, API key, or anything else. Now, to run it, we'll need to launch goose by running goose session, and it will start goose. So, this is what it looks like. It's very simple and really fast. I have tried it quite a bit, and from what I can say, it is not a proper AI agent. Instead, it's actually just a coder, similar to Ader. It wrote agent, but it should have just called itself AI coder or something of that sort. 
Anyway, now we can type anything over here, and it will perform the tasks as well. Let's ask it to make me a good-looking, playable synth keyboard. Once we do that, you'll see that it starts working on it. You'll see the loader here, and once we wait a bit, you'll see that it creates a plan of what files need to be generated, and then hands over the task to another agent, which will generate the code. If we wait a bit, it's now done. However, it has made it so that it uses the sound files inside the sound folder. Instead, I want it to create the sounds programmatically. So, let's just ask it to do that. Once we do, you'll see that it again starts working on the required tasks. If we wait a bit, then it's done. So, now, one thing that it cannot do is run terminal commands. If I ask it to run a terminal command, you'll see that it will not be able to do so, which is a bummer to see. I would have liked it to run terminal commands, but I believe that can be extended via MCP servers. Anyway, now let's run it and see if it works well or not. Okay, here's the answer, and this works pretty well. It produces the correct sound and looks pretty good, which is kind of cool. I also want to see how well it performs with a more complex code base. So, I have this Expo app here, and if we run Goose, then we can ask it to make me an AI chatbot interface that looks sleek and modern. Once we send that, you'll see that it first analyzes the code base and then starts working on it. So, let's wait a bit. And it's now done. So, we can now just run it, and if we look at it, it looks pretty good and works well. This is actually quite good as well. It's also really fast at coding. The stuff it generates is actually quite speedy. I mean, if you've used Ader, then it can be laggy at times. But this is pretty snappy, which is great. It also works well with Gemini, which is also great. It's pretty good at coding for sure. We can also extend it with things like MCP servers. You can see the extensions by going to Goose Configure, then selecting Add Extension, and then choosing the built-in extension. It will show you the available options, or you can also get some other extensions as well. You can just select any extension that you want to use. If we add one here, then it will be added, and now it can use that as a tool. If we run it and then ask it to do something that requires that tool, it will infer and use it as well, similar to how CLI or other systems use it. I actually like this because it's pretty good. It works well, is open source, and supports all kinds of providers, which is great to see. It does everything quite fast, and it handles context and everything else very well. So, this is good for sure. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.